A few years ago, when Google released Performance Max campaigns, they were effectively a black box. We couldn't really see what was performing, and we didn't have any way to optimize what was and wasn't working. Now, since then, Google has continued to double down on Performance Max and became very apparent that we're going to need to start using it. But the good news for us worried advertisers, at least originally, is that there are a lot more controls that we have over Performance Max campaigns. So in this video, I want to walk you through a handful of the biggest optimization actions you can make to your Performance Max campaigns and start seeing the best out of them in your account. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to focus on just one campaign we have in a client account because we'll be able to walk through everything pretty easily, should be able to see good examples here. The first set of optimizations I want to talk about are going to be combination of making sure that Google understands what your goals are for this Performance Max campaign. And there are a few different ones that you can use. They're all going to be at the campaign level in the settings section. So based on the view I have here, I could either come down and click on this gear icon, or I can come up here. What I'm going to do is click on settings. Now the first few pieces I want to talk about are in this objectives and goals section here. First, we need to decide what our conversion actions are going to be for this Performance Max campaign. By default, they're going to go for what your account level goal settings are, but you can choose specific campaign goals if you want to. And we already have a video that talks about setting up campaign level goals and whether or not you want to use the account level goals. You can check out that video at the top of the screen right now. But depending on how many conversion actions you have, you want to make sure that your Performance Max campaigns are optimizing toward the right conversion action. This one's set up for the account, and that's what we want. So I'm just going to click Cancel. Now the second piece, before I get into the other pieces in Objectives and Goals, it's going to be in the Bidding section down here. Right now, we are focused on maximize conversions with a target CPA set at $0.22. Cents. You can change the bid strategy if you would like. We can still focus on conversions, or you can focus on conversion value. These are the only optimization events that we have in Performance Max. And Google is going to use whatever conversion events you set up in the Goals section to try and hit your targets that you've placed in the Bidding section. So these two go hand in hand. First, make sure you have the right goals for Performance Max. Second, make sure you have your bidding strategy set up so it can optimize to a reasonable goal for those conversion events. Again, this one is set where we want, so we're going to click out of here. And now let's go back up into this top section. Next, you can adjust different values for those conversions if there are certain subsets of users that have a higher value than others. This makes the most sense if you're trying to use the maximize conversion value bidding strategy we just talked about. And if I come over here to create Google Ads value rule, you see here we get to select the goal, we get to select the condition, whether it's device, location, or audience, and then we can adjust the value for each of those by either adding or multiplying more value to the base conversion value. I'm not going to go any further than that because Joe already has a video about conversion value rules. So if you're interested in that, you can check out the top of the screen right now. And then the last piece for this section I want to talk about is the customer acquisition. Performance Max campaigns, at least at the start, had a reputation for just stealing lots of traffic from remarketing campaigns or any existing audience list. This is the answer to that. By default, Performance Max is going to try and find new and existing customers equally. But if you check this box here, you can decide if you want to bid higher for new customers than existing, meaning you're just bidding more aggressively for them. Or you can come down here and say you only want to bid for new customers, meaning you would exclude existing customers. As you can see here, both of these require that you add in an audience segment of your existing customers that has at least 1,000 active members in it. If you don't meet that minimum, it won't be able to work, and you're still going to include existing users. So I know 1,000 might be a lot for some companies, but it all goes back to Google's privacy piece. If you feel like your Performance Max campaigns are stealing from your existing customers or just kind of reaping the benefits of a remarketing list, this is a great option to check this box add in your customer lists, and make sure that you're either focusing more on new customers or focusing only on new customers. For this account, we're happy for repeat visitors, so we're just going to go ahead and leave that as it is. So that wraps up the settings of trying to make sure that you're optimizing your Performance Max campaigns for the right goals at the right cost and making sure they're either new or an existing customer. Before we leave this page, I have a couple more things I want to talk about. The first is going to be around the actual assets you can use in Performance Max. 
We're not going to be in an asset group looking at the headlines and descriptions, all that stuff. It's pretty clear that you can add in your images, videos, headlines, descriptions, all the text you want, and customize your Performance Max asset groups. But one option that might get overlooked is going to be down here in Campaign Settings. And I'm going to combine a couple of these. So I'm going to open up Additional Settings, scroll down a little bit. And the first one I want to talk about is this Automatically Created Assets. So if we look here, these allow Google to help you generate assets for your ads using existing content from your landing page, domain, and ads. The final URL expansion piece uses the information on your site to identify additional relevant search queries, and it allows Google to send users to different pages of your website rather than just the final URL you add in an asset group. So in short, having the text assets box checked means that Google can write new headlines and descriptions for you, and having the final URL box checked means that Google can send users to different landing pages on your site than the one that you set up in your asset group. Now, if you don't want to opt into either of those, you can just uncheck one of the boxes, and it'll usually uncheck both. But you can opt into text assets by itself, but you cannot opt into just final URL expansion. That will, if you could see that thing, requires automatically created text assets to work as well. That might seem fishy, but it's in your best interest. If Google's going to send somebody to a different landing page than the one you specified, you probably want text that's actually about that landing page to be what's in the ad copy. Now, there are two pieces of control that you have for this final URL. First, you can exclude some URLs from your site. You can do that based on the actual URL, based on custom labels that you've applied, which we'll talk in a minute, or based on rules where the URL contains certain language and URL also contains other language, so on and so forth. For now, I'm going to click Cancel, because the other option you have to control this is going to be just down here. This is why we opened this up. It's going to be Page Feeds. We don't have any page feeds in this account because we're not trying to limit anything. But if you've run dynamic search ads in the past, this is going to feel very similar. You can upload a list of all of the pages on your site that you are happy for Google to send users to as a landing page. And you can apply that to this campaign. And then to focus only on the URLs in this page feed, you would need to come up here and uncheck this final URL box. Because if I leave it on, and we come back down here, you'll see this message that with final URL expansion on, you will use all URLs Google knows about your website, including any that are in the page feed. So by turning it off, you'll focus only on those in this page feed. So if you want to let Google expand beyond the final URL you have at the asset level, but you still need some control, you can decide either to upload a page feed or you can utilize the exclusion option, whichever is going to be easiest for you. Speaking of exclusions, one last thing I have on this page is going to be a first set of exclusions. And just like the new and existing customer bidding, this was a response to users finding that Performance Max can pretty often steal a lot of traffic from a brand campaign. So you'll see down here at the bottom, brand exclusions. I'll open this up. You can see that we already have a brand exclusion list added here. And I'm not going to go too far in depth because we have another brand exclusion list video that you can check out at the top of the screen right now. But effectively, what these brand exclusion lists let you do is create a list of your brand, add it to this campaign, and then Google will not show ads for any queries that have to do with that brand from this Performance Max campaign. This means that your search brand campaigns should be pretty untouched. They take all the traffic and that Performance Max will not be bidding on branded search traffic, which almost always artificially inflates performance, and makes it look better than it really might be. Now, there are a couple other options we have for excluding the traffic and placements that Performance Max campaigns will show. For now, I'm going to click Cancel. And both of the others live at the account level. So let's hop over into Tools. We're going to go into Shared Library. Now let's go to Exclusion Lists. You'll see here we started on the Negative Keyword List section. If you create an account level negative keyword list, all of your Performance Max campaigns will honor that negative keyword list. Just like some of the other pieces, we have a video that talks about how to create an account level negative keyword list. You can check that out at the top of the screen right now. But that's a great way to help curb some of the search traffic that you'll see from your Performance Max campaigns. Additionally, the placement exclusions list will do the exact same thing. If you create an account level placement exclusions list, you'll be able to exclude placements for Google Display Network, YouTube, and even the Search Partner Network from your account. 
to make sure that you're not showing in places that just aren't performing or aren't suitable for your brand. Speaking of suitability, content suitability over here, whatever you have this set at for your account will apply to your Performance Max campaigns. So make sure you have your account level set up exactly the way that you need it. This section is pretty straightforward, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. But then for the last set of controls that you have, I do wanna hop into one of our asset groups, but we're not gonna look at the assets themselves. We're actually gonna look at the signals that we're giving to Google. So I'm gonna hop back to campaigns and then head to asset groups. And again, we're not gonna focus on the actual asset itself. I'm not gonna click these pieces. What I'm gonna do is come up to signal. In your Performance Max campaigns, you have two sections that you can influence the targeting of Performance Max. First is going to be search themes. These are going to be additive to the search queries that you would use just with your regular Performance Max campaigns. As you can see here, when I'm on the little question mark, these themes can influence who sees your ads across the different channels for Google, but it's not going to exclusively target these users. Search themes are best used when your website doesn't actually include some of the terms that you think are valid for your business, and you can use these to help extend the reach into more relevant terms. And then the last option we have is going to be down here in the audience signal. Just like search themes, this is going to be additive. And as you can see here, Performance Max will use your audience signal as a starting point to reach users, but it will easily extend beyond that. If you want to add in different users, you can click on the pencil here. And each audience signal can utilize your data. So these are going to be people who've interacted with your business. So think about your customer lists, website visitor lists, app users, all the different types of remarketing you can use. You'll add that in here. You can add in different options for people's interests and detailed demographics, which if I just check into this box here, I can either search for something or I can browse. And that includes in-market, life events, detailed demographics, affinity, and custom interests. And then in the demographic section down here, you can start to narrow into specific groups of users, whether it's their gender, age, or if you also know additional information about parent status and household income. But again, all of these options are only indicators for Google. They're not going to focus only on these users, but they are going to take this into account when trying to target new users. And they'll probably try and target these users first and then go out and reach new people after that. So overall, as you can see, there's a lot of different inputs that you have to help optimize your performance max campaigns, whether they are the campaign level settings to make sure that you're optimizing for the right goals, hitting it profitably, and finding either new or existing users. You can also make sure you're showing up on the right types of terms, or even more specifically, not showing up for the wrong types of search terms and placements, whether it's through brand exclusion lists, keyword and placement exclusion lists, or the content suitability controls. You can influence the targeting signals through search themes as well as audience signals. But again, those are just influences, not targeting restrictions. And then lastly, you can decide how much control Google wants to have over the text or final URL components of your Performance Max campaigns by opting into or out of the automatically created text assets and final URL expansion at the campaign level, and then controlling those with some exclusions or page feeds. As I mentioned in the intro, Performance Max campaigns just are not going away. What we need to do is learn how to work with them and get the best performance out of them that we can for our clients. And although these aren't all of the different things you can do to see the best performance from your Performance Max campaigns, they're usually the ones we hear people gripe about the most. Hopefully this rundown has given you more confidence in your ability to control and optimize Performance Max campaigns for the performance that you wanna see. But if you have any questions about any of these different controls or anything else within Performance Max, leave us a note in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.